Memorial Day will be the start to a very busy summer travel season. According to AAA, the number of travelers were, will most likely surpass pre-pandemic levels at about 43.8 million, marking this the busiest Memorial Day holiday weekend in nearly two decades. U.S. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg joins me now. Mr. Secretary, always nice to get a few moments with you. So we've talked a lot in the past about just chaos in America's airports because of these large crowds. What should consumers expect this weekend? Well, we were very encouraged by last year's results. Uh, the cancellation rate for flights last year was uh, at a 10-year low, and that included some uh, very smooth sailing across some of the busiest travel days ever recorded last year. So what I'm looking for this year is can the airlines and the airports of this country keep that up when we have even more travelers coming? Uh, a lot of TSA projections would suggest we're, we're going to have the busiest summer uh, holiday travel season ever. Memorial Day is really the launch of that. Obviously, we're uh, pleased about what that means economically, but, but that's still uh, a big challenge to the system. 44 million travelers uh, expected by AAA, uh, about 3 million going through TSA checkpoints on Friday alone, which uh, we think will be the busiest day of that Memorial Day weekend as far as air travel is concerned. Definitely a good idea for travelers to uh, uh, allow a little extra time, make a plan, be patient. Uh, and also for air travelers, we're urging them to make sure you know your rights because so much has changed in the last couple of years as we have launched new rules and new passenger protections to make sure that airlines take care of you, especially if you do experience some kind of disruption and the airline is responsible. Uh, Mr. Secretary, of course, a lot of these publicly, uh, these airlines in many respects are, they are in fact publicly traded, Delta, JetBlue, you name it. So they want to make a lot of money uh, on a weekend like Memorial Day. They stuff the planes. But in terms of scheduling, are airlines in this country scheduling realistically? You know, this is a big concern, especially in uh, summer of 22, when we saw uh, huge amounts of delays and it seemed that the airlines just weren't prepared to service the schedules they were actually selling. Uh, so what I'm looking at now is uh, results. The results have certainly improved, but I think one of the side benefits of the rule we just launched on automatic refunds, which says that if your flight gets canceled uh, and you don't fly, uh, you don't have to ask for your money back, it's just going to come to you, is that really changes the economics for airlines that might have been tempted uh, to engage in unrealistic scheduling. Anytime there is a credible uh, concern in our department about unrealistic scheduling, we will investigate. We've actually had some active reviews underway. And if we make a determination that that's what happened, there are consequences to that. Uh, the best way, of course, to deal with all of that is for the airlines to do the right thing in the first place. Look, we want them to succeed. We want America's airlines to succeed and thrive. We want them to do it by providing good customer service and through honest practices. And Mr. Secretary, how much progress uh, has been made on, uh, made on addressing the pilot shortage? Uh, so w from my conversations with the sector, there's been definite improvement in the availability of pilots. Uh, the pay for pilots has been uh, going up uh, in an extraordinary way, not just for the, uh, uh, the uh, captains of those uh, wide body long haul aircraft who can often make north of half a million dollars a year, uh, but I've been encouraged to see the entry level, the other end of that career pipeline uh, in those regional airlines. That pay has, has gone through some noticeable improvements. Uh, now, of course, raising the pay is one thing. It's taken a while for the training pipeline to catch up with that, especially because of the uh, rigorous standards that we rightly have on what it takes to even qualify for safety reasons. But uh, again, real, real improvement uh, on the pilot front. Continuing to keep an eye on mechanics as well. Uh, that, that's an area where uh, there can be a lot of tightness in that uh, skilled labor market. Uh, and uh, watching what's going on with flight attendants, making sure that they are uh, well taken care of and, and, uh, and that that pipeline is strong. By the way, we're doing the same thing over on our end at the FAA, increasing the uh, hiring of air traffic controllers. I was just in Congress asking for the funding to be able to do 2,000 controllers uh, next year on top of the 1,800 that we are hiring this year and the 1,500 that we hired last year. We finally reversed the decade-long loss in the number of air traffic controllers, or what I should say is we've stopped that trend line from going down. Now we're pushing to uh, accelerate it going back up. Well, that's certainly good to hear. And, and of course, uh, a lot of the, the pilots and flight attendants, they're on Boeing planes, Mr. Secretary. Uh, have you been encouraged by anything this company is doing to address legacy problems it's having and seemingly new problems that continue to pop up almost every other week? 
Yeah, the good news is that uh, there has been a lot of engagement. They've taken a number of steps in response to the pressure that the FAA is putting on them, but there's still a long way to go. Uh, in a few days, we're going to see the results of the 90-day uh, review. Uh, the administrator, Mike Whitaker, put them on a 90-day clock and said, we need to see a comprehensive plan on how you're going to get on top of these quality issues uh, and uh, what it's going to take to get that done. We know that there's new leadership coming in at Boeing as well. At the end of the day, it's all about the results. Uh, they're saying the right things. Uh, they're taking encouraging steps, but uh, we need to make sure that we see it on the shop floor, that we see it in terms of the quality of the product that rolls off the line. And that's why FAA is taking this extraordinary step of not permitting them to increase their production rate until they've shown beyond a doubt uh, that they can safely address those quality issues and uh, increase that production in a way that's consistent with the quality that everybody expects from such an important company and producer in the United States. Should, a, should Americans trust Boeing? that they're going to get it right? Look, I, I'm on a, a Boeing airplane every few days. I was on one yesterday. I think I'll be on one uh, next week, too. So I, this is personal to me as well as something I care about as a policymaker. And bottom line is FAA is not going to allow anything to, uh, to go forward that, uh, that they're not satisfied is safe. Sometimes that means putting extreme pressure uh, on a player like Boeing uh, or on the aviation sector. But, uh, uh, you know, it's in everybody's interest, including those companies, for safety to be beyond a shadow of a doubt. And that's the standard. Uh, often uh, for some of these safety engineering choices, uh, there is a billion to one standard, as in there has to be less than a one in a billion chance of failure for the FAA to be satisfied. And that is what has made flying on a commercial airliner in America by far the safest form of transportation. A lot of work is going to go into keeping it that way. And of course, Mr. Secretary, and lastly, we saw that ship uh, move out of the, uh, uh, that crashed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge this week, uh, a positive development. What steps is the administration taking to, to protect, protect and improve the, the nation's bridges? Uh, we're really encouraged to see that boat move. That means that uh, that ship, I should say, move. That's a 400-foot channel opening up uh, and a big step toward getting the full 700-foot channel up and running and get everybody back to normal at the Port of Baltimore. This has opened up a new level of attention to something that I think uh, over the next years that will be a major focus, which is what can be done to make sure things like this don't happen again. Some of the questions are about the, the design and protection of bridges. Some of the newest bridge designs have uh, what are called dolphins, fenders, or even islands around their piers. Uh, but also, it's difficult to describe the level of physical force that uh, a ship of 248 million pounds, even when it's going at about 10 miles an hour, uh, brings with it when it uh, has a collision like this. So the most important thing is to make sure that that can't happen in the first place. Uh, that is the focus of so much of the information coming in from NTSB. Uh, of course, their work continues as an investigator, but we as a department are paying close attention to what that an independent NTSB report is going to tell us. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg, always nice to get some time with you. Have a wonderful and safe holiday weekend. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Same to you. Thank you.